Well, we are all done here. We're in the uh, hallways behind the scenes at Prudential Center in Newark, New Jersey. I'm joined right now by Palafox, a man who less than a year ago, no one knew his name. And now maybe some people know his name, the people that were here that were watching. Uh, what has what this experience been like for you? You just lifted the trophy. You've now gone through the gauntlet of interviews and press conferences, ending with me. What's it been like? Um, honestly, really, really tiring. I think, uh, I mean, this feels kind of bad to say, but I really needed to go pee after we won. And I was like, only thing, I was like, I need, I'm going to piss my pants. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, other than that, it was like, I, it was probably the best moment of my life. No, I, you're so real for that, I think is what people say. Because uh, I, I know a lot of people are just like, oh, look at the glory, the glory. And you're like, you know, where's the restroom? I got to I gotta wrap this up. So did you run off stage or what happened? Uh, I ended up leaving early. They were like, we need to take a group shot. And I was like, no, <laughs> not right now. Did you come back or are you just yeah. not in the group shots? I mean, I, I got enough. I mean, sure, there's some without me now, but like, you know, I got enough. Because they're going to upload these all later on to the Flickr, and I'm going to need to pit one for, like, the press conference. And it's just going to be so funny if it's, like, <laughs> the four players, not you. <laughs> You're, like, trying to perpetuate the who's Palafox thing. Um, all right. So, okay. So, obviously, tiring. Obviously, you need to use the restroom. But what else, uh, what else has this experience been like? I mean, is it surreal at all? I mean, you've been playing for a very long time, right? So. Um, honestly, like... When we won, when we won our first series in the upper bracket, or like, sorry, when we made it into Worlds, yeah. like that didn't feel real, and I felt like almost as equally happy. Well, not 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 close. Yeah. Sorry, I lied. That's a lie. And like even right now, it's like so hard to process the feelings of like, like did we just win? Like did we actually just do it? Um, yeah, I mean it feels great. Honestly, I might get addicted to the feeling of arenas, you know. Yeah. So. Well, I, I mean, that's the other thing I was going to ask is I interview so many people after wins where they've, like, been on stage a ton or they've lifted trophies or they've done all this stuff, and yet here you are on stage in this arena, the crowd's going crazy uh, and really cheering you on. I, I feel like it was kind of, especially as the underdog, when you guys started to pick up team games, like, the crowd started really uh, switching to you guys. So uh, what was the adrenaline like? What was all that like on stage? Um, I just remember... So we lost game one, right? Uh, we still felt really confident, but in my head, I'm like, I kind of don't want to go to. And then I was like, okay, I need to get out of that mindset. Um, most of it was just trying to like refocus over and over again, like uh, just to make sure like we just take one game at a time, you know? Um, and I, obviously like with the crowd and stuff like that, I know it might sound weird, but the crowd kind of helped me snap out of it and just be like, man, this is so fun. I'm so glad to be here, you know? And that's that's really, what did you get scared at all from the pyrotechnics or anything like that? No. I mean, you walked out and they're also like there's like musical performance happening and you're <laughs> standing there with all that and like there's all this stuff going on. Was that uh, overwhelming at all? Um, no, honestly, I was just so happy to be there. I was like, I long time coming, you know. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Okay, so I uh, we were just talking beforehand. You asked me if I thought you guys were going to win. I said no, not in the slightest because. <laughs> Like, you had lost to C9. I said slammed. You were like, that's not true. Yeah. But you had lost to C9-03 previously. And going into playoffs, uh, I don't think people expected you guys to, to place top four. So what changed over the course of playoffs that allowed you guys to eventually get to the point where you're lifting the trophy? Um, I think there was just, like, honestly, like, we fight a lot on the team. And it's just, like, there's a lot of strong opinions. Uh, oh, you're one of those teams. Behind the scenes, you guys are arguing a ton. Yeah, I mean, it's just like, arguing is good, unless it's just like screaming at each other and be like, you're awful, you're awful. No, it's like, you're wrong, and this is why, and you explain, and, and then everybody's like, more on the same page, so even if you don't like it, you're just like, I understand why, you know? Um, I think we kind of just went through like, you know, the trials and the tribulations together, you know? Yeah. All right, so it was kind of like figuring that all out, and did you feel yourself powering up over playoffs? Um, okay. The way I felt was like I had a lot of champions under my belt and Do or sorry, contracts had a lot of champions. And I felt like top lane and bot lane, like top lane and AD carry were actually like missing some. Yeah. But going into this series, like Dokla was like, just pick me Jax. Yeah. And then and then FBI was like, just pick me Zeri. And then I was like, oh shit, it's free. <laughs> how much had you had how much had they played those champions beforehand? How much did you practice those going into this? 
Uh, so we, we played like almost no Jackson scrims, almost no Zeri, no Talia, no Nico, but uh, you know. <laughs> so how does that happen on stage? Because you're in the, the finals and you guys are picking stuff that you just don't ever play. So how does that occur? Um, I, I mean, me and Doklo were always talking about like, he was playing a lot of Jackson solo queue, but he didn't really feel confident to play it. Yeah. And I think a lot of the time uh, with Doklo, especially it's like confidence is like, if he's confident in a pick, let's just give him the pick and then he'll perform, right? Yeah. I think you can kind of see today, like he kind of shit on Fudge, you know? Um, and then with Vic, Vic is like, all the AD carries do the same thing. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, Vic, Vic isn't that hard to convince. Okay, okay, she just did. All right. Uh, I saw, I think it was uh, Evie on Twitter uh, talking about how I think you're the first North American mid laner to go to Worlds in like a half a decade or something like that since Poe Belter in 2018, I think. It was uh, go to Worlds is the first seed. First seed, that's right, that's right. So. I, I, and I also look at the team, and there's a lot of North American talent on it. Uh, you guys have been fighting against a lot of uh, teams that do not pick up a lot of North American talent. What do you think of sort of your presence on this team, the first seed win, and also the lineup? Um, I mean, hopefully I think this is going to be the step in the right direction for NA as a whole. Um, I think that like a lot of orgs are gonna just like look at themselves internally, not just look at the players and be like, we're probably the ones at fault. I, that's what my hope is. Is it actually gonna happen? Who knows? Yeah. Um, like, well, what I, what I heard is like, so in C, or 2020, when I was on C9 Academy, um, they told me it was like, okay, you're gonna be our starting mid laner, or we can get perks. And then I was like, well, I'll, I'm taking like minimum and perks is two million, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, they're like, no, we're gonna go for perks, you know? And, you know, that, that happened. I think in 2021, they did the same thing with copy apparently uh, and they took MNS instead. So yeah, I think it's just gonna be, uh, hopefully the whole like ecosystem changes a little bit. Did that make anything feel sweeter where you're like, where's perks now, cloud nine, as you're <laughs> lifting the trophy? Um, yeah, in a way it does. I, I just think hearing that stuff is, is particularly interesting, especially given that a lot of these players have ended up leaving the league, but you stuck around. Um, all right, so what happens now for you? Have you guys talked at all about timelines for going to Korea or boot camp, any of that stuff? Um, yeah, I think we're planning on going like mid-September mid uh, just to get like a little bit of a head start. And um, I know like for me, I've been challenger. I've been like top, top 20, top 30 or something like that in Korea before. I'm just trying to get a little bit higher. I know Vic has done really well as well, and I know Ignar has obviously done well. Um, and just like elevating our individual level before Worlds, and then uh, on top of that, it's kind of like not forgetting how we won here. It's just like playing as a team, you know? I think that's like super important. And I think um, in a lot of Asian regions, you can kind of see it with like the way they play, like engages and like the way they just like talk a lot, right? And I felt like we were doing that a lot today. All right, so I know, I think Croissant has already talked to you about this. I don't know, we might have to follow up, but it sounds like we're going to try to get you on Hotline League this week. Did you say, Croissant said you were down, depending on timing. Um, it's not today, it's this week. It's this week, yeah, yeah. Okay. Definitely not today, yeah, it's like he, almost he said today, and I was oh. like, hey. No, like Tuesday at 7, P Pacific. Can you swing that? Assuming we all get back and LA's okay? Yeah, that sounds good. All right, It'll, we'll try to get you and Croissant on, because... Uh, I think, I don't know how much you've been in the chat. I know you're in the chat sometimes, but I think Mark and I have dogged on you or something like that saying like, oh yeah, you're, you need to, to do more to be able to get on Hotline League, which is obviously not the case. Okay. We're just joking, but you've certainly uh, certainly did a lot here, especially, in, I think I was on Hotline League previously doubting NRG while you were in the chat. Did you, were you there for that? Uh, maybe somebody maybe. was on your account, or maybe it was Dokla. Somebody in the, on it NRG was. Me, it might've been Dokla. You guys are kind of like. Uh, ego surfers a little bit. <laughs> well, regardless, you've uh, you've uh, you've lifted the trophy. I'm excited to have you on the show. We'll talk more this week. But anything you want to say to any of the fans out there? Um, it's been a fun ride. I hope we can push it toward third worlds. Thank you so much. Thanks, dude. Congratulations on the win. A huge, huge win. I I know you've wanted to uh, accomplish this for a long time, and I don't think people have been giving you the respect you deserve. So hopefully, they give it to you now. For everyone else, you can check out the rest of my coverage of all things LCS right here on my YouTube channel. 
Hey everyone, this is Travis here at the LCS Finals. I hope you enjoyed my coverage. Uh, I just want to thank all of the members of this YouTube channel. There's a lot of you who are, uh, you just spent $2.99 a month or $5, well it's like $4.99, uh, to support the channel. In exchange you get to watch interviews, Some, maybe even this one early. And a lot of people have been doing that lately. It's actually become a double digit percentage of the revenue for this channel. Uh, so if uh, you do that, thank you very much. And if you want to join, you can hit that uh, member join button down below. It's not the subscribe thing. Uh, oh, Palafox is here. So I got to wrap this up. Bye.